lover of Christ, don't do that. Sanctified, spirit-filled person, don't do that. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and you shouldn't worship the... Coming up next. couple housekeeping things. One, I just hit 500 subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I did a live stream yesterday that uh, was wonderful. Had a lot of interaction. It was a Q&A and just talked about different things. Um, shared a little bit more about me and my past. I'm not a Russian bot or Chinese agent of some kind, uh, as some people probably suspect. <laughs> but really, I'm a pastor and a husband and a father, uh, not in that particular order. Most of all, I am a follower of Christ, and I do love the Lord, uh, something I have not always done in my life. I've not always followed Christ. I've not always, um, I, had, I wasn't a Christian. There was one point when someone was against me, uh, but for my sake, and that's actually the kind of mantra, if you will, of this channel being contra mundum pro mundo. Uh, I am Richard contra mundum. Richard against the world. That's what that means. So against the world before the world. And it's just Latin. It's a nicer way to say it than just English. You clicked on this because you want to know what we shouldn't worship, right? <clears throat> well, we shouldn't worship the Bible, right? Don't worship the Bible. Stop worshiping the Bible, everybody. Okay. Just stop it. And that's it. Y'all have a great day. Just kidding. You know I can't make a two-minute or less video, although I do do some shorts sometimes. Those are fun. Um, no, but you hear this a lot, and you'll hear this from leftist, progressive, liberal, whatever you want to call them, Christians. And generally, they're going to be affirming of everything that the world currently affirms. Uh, very fascinating, indeed. But they want to pit Jesus against the Bible, right? Or they want to pit God against his word. Uh, we see this a lot of times with uh, there's so many, I don't know. I was struggling today. I wasn't going to make a video, honestly, um, just because I'm a little tired. I did share, I am intermittent fasting and I'm not trying to like brag or whatever, but um, for health reasons, it's not, it's not uh, spiritual reasons, but not like one's better than the other, but I have no problem talking about it because it's not for spiritual reasons. Anyway. Um, yeah. I'm, it drains me. Actually, I haven't eaten for quite some time. I won't scare everybody with how long, but um, it's just like, I don't have any energy in my brain. It's just kind of like, oh, anyway, I don't want to make a video today at all. I've got a Contra talk dropping tomorrow on Saturday, um, which should be good. I'm actually talking with Ronnie Rogers, who's a pastor in Oklahoma. And he's part of the conservative Baptist network and uh, we talk about different things, soteriology and of course the issues in the SBC mainly. And a few other things and just basically kind of trying to see and, and, and I don't want to say circle the wagons, but really try and, you know, build bridges to use the modern parlance. Um, but I think there's a time is upon us once again to have unity in the essentials, like actual unity and not ridicule and mock and make fun of people uh, because they differ slightly because there's plenty of people in all sorts of camps that love Christ, but then there's people in those same camps that basically are adding to the gospel uh, in no uncertain terms. A lot of those people will say, or they'll pit the Bible against the Bible, you know, not just progressive Christians with the rainbow flag and, you know, the pro-death stance or voting for pro-death candidates, but just in general, People will, oh, and we saw this even with uh, the thief on the cross recently with, you know, today's a week after Good Friday, but resurrection and, and talking about the thief on the cross. He didn't get baptized. He wasn't part of a church. He wasn't a theologian. He didn't read the Bible. He didn't pray. He didn't do anything. He just simply believed. Well, ironically, it doesn't even say he actually believed, which is funny uh, or repented either. It's, it, but it's all baked into the cake of that scenario. And sometimes people will get so bent out of shape about like, oh, you just got to believe in Jesus, you know? And it's like, yeah, but the demons believe like, oh, well, but yeah, but you're trusting. And it's like, well, 
does it say anything about baptism? It, but that's all, again, baked into the cake of, of believing Christ. But people want to pit the scripture against the scripture, even well-meaning so-called Christians. And maybe they are Christians. They're just naive and stupid. But don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Don't don't pit the scripture against God or Jesus against his word or the spirit is moving. Don't don't. Oh, it's just about me, because what ends up happening is people stick to their feelings. Don't trust your feelings. Right now, there is a level of of we are sanctified in the spirit. We are changed. We are born again and we have wisdom like the scales with Paul. You know, the spiritual scales have fallen off. And I do see things very differently than I did. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, before I came to Christ, my early 20s, especially. The world is different and you can really see much more clearly. But until you, I mean, you're because you're dead, right? You're dead, you're sick. The Bible uses different analogies, but it's not healthy at all to trust your own conscience. Lest we forget the Bible says that our heart is deceitful. But let's just roll with it and say, well, okay, but let's just not really trust the Bible. Because this is what people are saying. They're saying, well, you worship the Bible, meaning we adhere to the scripture. You know, the, some people will call it the regular principle or uh, just, well, the scripture says this, therefore we should do this and not that. You know, this goes with women teaching and preaching, uh, especially in mixed audiences or having authority over men, um, the sacraments or the, uh, the ordinances, baptism and Lord's table, uh, preaching the word, talking about sin, talking about, you know, Classic. Well, Jesus never talked about homosexuality and they'll pit Jesus against Paul, uh, for example. That doesn't happen much uh, anymore. I'm sure it will again. But remember, there's nothing new under the sun. There's just kind of like these waves of different uh, heretical false teaching silliness. But do we see this in the church, in history especially? Do we see Christians that aren't biblicists? People who are adhering to God's word. Because at the end of the day, if I pull up an email from my wife, which she emailed me a couple days ago, and I was actually praying, and this is a little encouragement. I was praying uh, for a specific thing, and she emailed less than 45 minutes later. Again, I didn't talk tell her I was praying on anything. This was, I was at the office. And she affirmed, unbeknownst to her, but this is the spirit, and this is how the spirit works so often. And even today, same thing. I was praying about how and what I should do. I was like, I don't really want to make a video. I was just going to make a short video saying no video today. Uh, well, here's a video today. And, I, you know, I want to be consistent because people, there's enough people now that are watching. And I think you're probably watching on certain times and looking forward to that. And I hope it's helpful. I know a lot of people said that it is helpful and they appreciate the teaching and so on, uh, which I'm thankful for. And there's ways to support me. Um, both financially and just also subscribing and commenting on other things as well. So uh, I do, I do appreciate it. But I was praying about that because I woke up early this morning and I thought, I just don't want to make a video. I'm really tired. I'm drained. I've had coffee, but I haven't had, eaten anything. And so I'm kind of like a little more jittery than normal. Uh, I know I'm probably talking way faster, although I talk fast anyway. Anyway, we shouldn't worship the Bible. And you know what? I can stand behind that and you can too. Whatever flavor of Christian you are, even if you're not a Christian, you still be like, well, yeah, you shouldn't worship the Bible. You know, I know that. I'm not a Christian, but at least I know you should, or you should worship God. You know, don't make the Bible an idol. We see this a lot. You'll we'll see this on Facebook. You'll see this on Instagram. You'll we'll see this on, you know, Twitter. And, you know, if, if you wade into the cesspool that is TikTok. Um, <laughs> but we're not doing that, though. And that's the thing. And here is there's, I don't know probably 4,000 verses that talk about it, but we're going to do just a, just a thought experiment because the alternative we'll get to in a moment, but let's look at some scripture. Okay. Let's look at some scripture and see where we're at. Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Great Psalm, right? One of the, that's of course, Psalm 19 is the biggest Psalm there. Uh, it's over 125. 30 verses, something like that. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Okay. Jeremiah 920. Now you women hear the word of the Lord. Open your ears to the words of his mouth. Teach your daughters how to wail. Teach one how another to lament. Of course, Jeremiah is a much, it's a, you know, basically he wrote Lamentations as well. The weeping prophet, some people call him. If you prefer King James, fine. Yet hear, hear the word of the Lord. O ye women. And let your ear receive the word of his mouth. 
Okay, yeah. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Christ praying in John 17, 17. Famously, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scriptures breathed out by God and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All scriptures breathed out by God. Inspired, NLT says. I like breathed out by God better personally than inspired. Inspired sounds like you're kind of getting like inspiration to paint a painting, which is not what's happening. All scripture. Right? So this includes all scripture, the Old Testament, New Testament. Remember, 2 Timothy is the last letter that Paul wrote, most likely. And he's even referencing uh, some of the letters that have already been written, like James, and he's written Galatians and others. There are hints and places where it seems that Paul knows that he's writing scripture. Peter referencing that as well. Uh, okay. Sometimes my internet does that. It's weird. Uh, NLT, therefore, we never stop thanking God that when we received his message from you, you didn't receive our words as mere human ideas. See, I like, this is why you want to read a few translations, not just one. You accepted what we said as the very word of God, which of course it is. Brian, we continually thank God because we received the word of God that you heard from us and accepted not as the word of man, but what it truly is the word of God. King James, same thing, which he heard from us. You received it not as the word of men, but the word of God. This is 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this reason, I constantly thank God received from us the word of God's message, except it is not the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God. You get the idea. John 1.1 1, 1, and Hebrews 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. <clears throat> He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made and him was alive and the life was light of men. So notice what's packaged in that right there. In the beginning was the word going back to the beginning of time. The word was with God. The word was God. Now Jehovah witnesses in particular have their own translation. Uh, the new world translation. That's not a good translation. They're not Christians. Um, they're, they're changing and there's a lot of, pseudo and neo jehovah witnesses today though they don't know it um but you know jesus is created and so on they change the scripture and say that jesus uh was a god that sort of thing of course there's plenty of the places where they haven't changed it but that's another video but they know that the word is god they know that jesus the the scripture is saying it's god now keep in mind those who translated the bible we don't know who they are it's kind of a committee a secret committee uh, which is also very suspicious. But further, the guy who started it, um, Miller, right? I could look it up. I'm not going to. The guy who started it back in the 19th century didn't even know Greek, even like the alphabet. And yet he's supposedly translating the Greek New Testament. Anyway, that's just extra. I'm not going to charge you for that one. Lastly, Hebrews 1. Long ago, in many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in his last days, he spoke to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Right. So that doesn't talk about God's word. But what it does talk about is Jesus. And it talks about Jesus's work. And we see this, and I've done some videos in the past and looking at other people, namely Andy Stanley, who's fairly famous at this, that like reducing this lowest common denominator Christianity. We saw this with a thief on the cross just on Easter, Good Friday, uh, this last week. Be, oh, he wasn't baptized. He wasn't this. He didn't go to a church. He wasn't a theologian. He never read. He didn't do this. He didn't memorize scripture. He didn't go to Awana. He didn't do VBS. He didn't do adult Bible study. He didn't do an apologetics training. He didn't do evangelism course. He didn't do any of that. He just believed in Jesus. Yeah, he also didn't have a life of the world, the flesh, and the devil attacking him. Okay? He literally believed, and it doesn't actually say he believed, but that was baked into the cake of what was going on, the context. And then he died. But certainly had he not died, had he just been there right before the cross and understood that Jesus was the son of God, or maybe he's down off the cross and Jesus is on the cross, like the centurion, for example, did these things. He was part of a fellowship. Get into a church, Christian. Get into a, a good church and make it better and, and find, a, find a, the best church and make it better. Serve, give, give financially, support your pastor. Seriously. 
It matters. Don't think, you know, your whatever a month doesn't doesn't add up to anything. Don't think you praying for him and his wife or him and his family or the leaders of your church or those there, oh, it doesn't really matter. It does. Of course it matters. But for, further than that, read the scripture, memorize the scripture, meditate on the scripture. I've got a, this is a reader's Bible. This is ESV. Um, it doesn't have any verses. And I know I've said that before. I've got, this is just kind of like a shorter one. This is everything. Um, a couple inches thick. I've got a um, six volume. You can't see this at all. It's just totally bleached out. There you go. I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't have verses or chapters. Uh, breaks. In. It kind of has headings, which is okay. Um, I got that originally. And then I got the six volume that doesn't have anything and reads like a novel. Uh, where there's no chapter, verse, brace, nothing. You don't know where you are. But it's nice because all you're doing is just eating the word of God. Because remember, the chapter breaks and the verse breaks, they're not original at all. They were added far, far later. I'm not saying they're heinous and evil or something like that. But they often, at least for me, distract me. They'll pull me away from what I'm looking at and what I'm doing and so on. And I'll think, oh, five more verses. Oh, 20 more verses. Oh, there's four more chapters. Oh, my goodness. Especially if you're trying to read through the Bible in a year. So. Get one of those if you want. They have an ESV, Christian Standard Bible, I think King James, a few others. You don't have to. You can do what you want, I guess. But the point is, we can't, we're not worshiping the Bible. Okay, we're worshiping the author behind the Bible, right? I don't ever, and I've said this before, I don't ever read a text from my wife and only look at the text or the email that she sent me a couple days ago that I was praying about and it was an answer to a prayer. I don't, I don't look at that and be like, oh, this, the screen, oh, the LED, oh, the brightness. Oh, look at the characters. Oh, mighty characters, mighty black screen, black ink. No, that's stupid. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. At least nobody that's like sane and, you know, a faithful follower of Christ. We're looking at the author behind it. We know that this is his word, right? There's, you know, multiple other verses that I could pull up, multiple others. But again, is Jesus the word? Oh, Jesus is the word of God, not the Bible. And there's a there's a channel I'm, I'm going to review. It's Looney Tunes. Uh, and, and that's being kind. But literally the mantra is the Bible is the mark of the beast. Probably look at it next week or the week after. I'm like, but how do you know what the mark of the beast is if you don't have the Bible? I feel sorry for the lady. I, I mean, it's just, it's very cultish. It's, it's incredibly cultish. And I know that's, you know, probably overused, but the point is the same that we look at that and we think <laughs> you can't just go start your own thing. Like you're just wandering off on a deep end of aberrant theology. But of course it always sounds great on the surface, but how many churches, how many places, how many people, I mean, I just did a video this week, Wednesday with Catherine Crick, a, 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 apostle, she's an apostle, you're not an apostle, you crazy. And all the stuff you're saying and doing, you're just fluffing up people's emotions. You're sticking with the here and now only. You're not talking about heaven or hell. You're not talking about redemption. You're not talking about forgiveness. You're not talking about walking in newness of life and killing your sin, mortifying your flesh. But we know all that from the word of God. Because ultimately, and this is the very first video I did last year, is if we don't have the Bible, we say, okay, fine, I'm not going to worship the Bible, aka not read it. Or I'll read it very, very loosely. And I'm going to interpret it however I want. Okay. What do you have instead? What, what's the alternative? Because there's always an alternative. Right? You can't not do that. Like I mentioned, I'm fasting. I can't not do that. I can't do that forever. I have to eat or I'm going to die. Like, duh. Point is that we have these things that the alternative is nothingness. Your opinions. Being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Christian, don't do that. Don't do that. Lover of Christ, don't do that. Sanctified, spirit-filled person, don't do that. Don't listen to the lie. The person is, oh, I don't worship the Bible. Oh, I don't go to church. It's a bunch of hypocrites. Oh, I don't need to pray. I don't need to do this. I don't need to give. You know, I give in my own way. You know, I, I worship God out in the field, in the mountains, when I'm hunting, you know, when I'm shopping, you know, when I'm online, you know, whatever. And it's like, no, we need each other. Christians need each other because that's exactly where the enemy wants you is to stay in this wishy-washy floating around solo Christianity. We don't need that. 
We don't need that at all. Read the word, read it today. Pick a Psalm. I'm going to go through, I'm going through a book right now. I'm going to be preaching uh, through this um, at my church, the church I own. No, <laughs> you know what I mean when I say that. Uh, I hope you know what I mean. I don't own the church. I'm totally kidding. But Jesus is head of the church, not the Pope. Uh-oh. But see, that's not heinous anymore, is it? 500 years ago, that would have got me burnt at the stake. Now I could tell that to Pope Francis to his face, and he wouldn't. He would probably say something in Latin or something and walk away. Cultural issues are what's at stake. They change throughout the generations, but we can't be against the things that people were against 500 years ago if that's not a thing now. You're just preaching to deaf ears or people nodding their heads. Anyway, preaching through a book, uh, praying the Bible. And it's really good. And I'll probably do a video too on it because it's, it's, it is a really good book, short book, uh, but very, very impactful. So, you know, pray the Psalms, read the Psalms. There's 150 Psalms. You can break it down by 30. Uh, so there's 30 days, right? In a, in a month, generally 30 or 31. And you, know, you take the day and today's the 21st, 22nd. And you look and you'd read Psalm 22. Or you'd add 30 and read Psalm 52, or add 30, read Psalm 82, and so on, up to uh, 112 and 142. And you can read that, and, and it gets you more um, familiar with the Psalms, and also you're able to pray those Psalms back to God, as opposed to kind of saying the same old things about the same old things. Anyway, point is, we need the Word. We're not worshiping it. That's silly when someone says that online or in person. Ask them what they mean. You know, be generous. Don't be a jerk. Um, but confronting somebody doesn't mean you're a jerk and doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I mean, the Bible is replete with polemical things, correcting false teaching, calling out false teaching, calling out people by name and so on. Uh, not just the Old Testament or not just the New Testament, not just Paul, but it's throughout the scripture. It's, it's part of teaching. Sometimes you go, well, I just preach the gospel. Why are you doing this? Why you know, you're just puffing up your channel? Why do you just a attack people? You're just ridiculing this person or that person. No, no, no. I'm not doing that at all. I'm, I'm, this is teaching, right? Because they're like, all of us like sheep have gone astray. We've wandered over here and gone over there. What happens? The shepherd walks over and says, oh, you're okay. And pats you on the head and leaves you. No, sometimes he has to grab you with his crook, his long staff and hook you up. And sometimes you might, skin your knee. Sometimes you might get bruised. You might get a little bloodied, but it's better than you losing your life. Hope you found this helpful. Y'all take care. Have a great day. Be against the world for the world. We'll see ya.